Hey, this is Phyllis. Uh, me and Jesse's going to show you how to uh, tune up this uh, 10 by 12 tom using the uh, Evans torque key. Uh, I'll start out explaining a little bit about the uh, the torque key. Uh, first of all, I think it's the biggest waste of money. Uh, they run about 30 bucks, and they're absolutely of no use whatsoever. Even though uh, all torque keys are advertised that they help you to get uh, even tension uh, on your drum heads because that's the uh, most important thing in tuning a drum is making sure that the uh, head is seated evenly and tensioned evenly at each lug. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how the uh, torque key came about. Uh, if you know uh, anything about auto mechanics, uh, this kind of um, came from the, uh, from the uh, torque wrench or the uh, torque ratchet concept. And what a torque ratchet does, say like for a mechanic, when they're putting a, uh, a fan belt on their car, or the truck, if if that belt is too loose, you know the car won't run properly. If it's too tight, the car won't run properly. So what uh, someone came up with was a, a ratchet that has a uh, a gauge on it. I can't remember uh, what the uh, the gauge dial runs, uh, what the numbers are, uh, but it measures like uh, foot pounds and inch pounds. And um, say if you get your fan belt and you look in your book and it'll say like um, you're supposed to have like say 78 uh, inches per pounds or whatever it is then you would take your ratchet and you would put the uh, the little dial on 78 then as you're, uh, you put the ratchet on the bolt as you start moving that ratchet around as soon as that bolt is at that particular tightness the, uh, the ratchet kind of breaks free and will not turn the bolt uh, anymore so that gives it the precise amount of tension for that particular belt and this like I said is on the exact same concept except you know like I said this is just basically useless uh, I'll go ahead and I'll show you a close-up uh, of this. The uh, the bottom of the uh, key is just like a regular drum key. Same type of fitting. Uh, the top here is just a, a knob of no use whatsoever. Right here on the bottom is a, uh, a dial from 0 uh, to 9. Uh, It'll measure some tension. Uh, it'll give some resistance to this top part right here as it as you uh, tighten it up. Uh, this one is, is moving really freely right now, but as you tighten up this little uh, tension dial uh, right here, it'll give this top part right here a little more uh, resistance. Now the torque key uh, does not come with any kind of tuning guide whatsoever. Uh, you can't even get any type of reference from Evans or anyone else that makes the torque key. Uh, it does come with a warranty card, but uh, like I said, the little gauge here uh, is, is absolutely useless. But I'll go ahead and uh, and show you how to uh, you know tune your head up. So we'll start out. You always want to check your hardware, make sure nothing's loose, nothing's broke. If it is, you want to replace it. Uh, anything that is broke will uh, keep you. Um, from tuning your drum. Anything that's uh, damaged or broke, uh, it won't, your, your drum will never tune up. So you just be wasting your time. So always check your hardware. Check your hardware out on the inside make sure nothing's loose. Check along your bearing edge so that it's smooth. If you're not sure what your bearing edge is, it's this little edge that runs in a, uh, kind of a downward slope. So now is a good time to uh, get yourself a, a tape measure. Lay it on the drum just like this. And you want to let it go in this manner. And you want to measure. Make sure that everything is equal all the way around. If this drum in any way is warped, it, it'll never tune for you. you you'd just be uh, you know, better off you know, throwing it away because it'll never tune up for you. So after we've uh, you know, checked out all the uh, hardware and the bearing edge and make sure that the drum's not warped, uh, we'll go ahead and first thing you want to make sure that your logo matches up with your logo on your drums. That doesn't have anything to do with tuning, but uh, you don't want your drum looking sloppy. Uh, even if you're playing a uh, heavy metal or your grunge or you know whatever uh, punk, whatever you're playing, you know you, you don't want your drums looking sloppy. Once I put the head on, I just kind of slide it around a little bit, mash it down, <clears throat> turn it around like this, because uh, the most important uh, part of, uh, of drum tuning is getting this head seated evenly. So then, uh, this is a good time too to go uh, lay your rim on a, uh, a very even or level level surface. Lay it flat. Make sure it's not warped in any way. Flip it over. Same thing. Make sure it's not wobbling. Make sure it's laying flat on that surface. 
Then I bring it back to your drum. Uh, if you've got any screws missing at this time, or any screws that are stripped, or or, or washers missing, you want to replace them. Because, like I said, um, you've got to have uh, all your parts, or else uh, it'll it'll hinder your uh, drums from tuning properly. So then you want to uh, take your screws, and you just want to run them in finger tight. And remember, when you're running your screws in finger tight, you still want to use that crisscross method. Because, uh, like I said, you want to make sure that everything is seated evenly. Okay, after you get them finger tight, uh, you want to uh, do the next process in seating this head evenly. You put uh, your palm in the center of the drum, palm on top of the other palm, and you'll start mashing down. If you hear popping and cracking, that's okay. That's uh, part of the seating process. You're not going to hurt the drum. Now I'll let you hear uh, what the drum sounds like uh, right now. Uh, just finger tight. So that's got a little resonance, but it's still extremely uh, flat. So what we're going to do, uh, the goal, we're going to, um, like I said on this gauge, it's right about 6 with the resistance. And what we want to do is a, a first, uh, we're going to use a, a half a turn to begin with. Uh, if you're not sure what a half a turn is, we say we use this gauge right here as a uh, reference, and we'll turn it around to this side. That would be a half a turn. Uh, when you hear me refer to quarter turns, uh, you'd put, your, say, like your little gauge here at the 12 o'clock position. Imagine you're looking at a clock, and 12 o'clock is this position, 3 o'clock is over here. You would turn from 12 o'clock to the 3 o'clock position. That would be a, a quarter turn. So let's start out, and we'll try to get, um, we'll, I'm going to try to set this uh, dial probably uh, around 8. I think that will uh, have enough resistance to give it a half a turn. So I'll start up here. You probably won't be able to hear it click, but once I give it, start to turn it. Okay, that was just a little bit more than a half a turn. And it, uh, it finally it clicked, and once it clicks or breaks free from this part, uh, you know that you've uh, reached the amount of tension that you've set it at, which like I said, there's no way to actually set it at a half a turn or a quarter turn. Uh, this is just a, a, a guesstimation. So we'll come down to the uh, opposite uh, lug. Okay, some of them was gauged. Uh, it, it was almost half a turn. Some were not half turns. That was about a quarter turn on that one. And that's what I mean that uh, you know these are not exactly even amount of turns. Now of course this is supposed to be uh, gauging each one the exact same. Um, even though it's if you don't see it making exactly a half a turn, this gauge is saying that this one is still even. You know with the rest of them. Uh, and the only way you can really, you know, find that out is at this point, uh, take your uh, your drumstick and start tapping around uh, one inch from each lug. As you want to uh, listen for pitch variations. still right much uh, pitch variation. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, move the dial up uh, just a little bit more. This is probably going to move it right back around to what would be the zero or would be the ten, number 10 position. And I'm going to try to uh, start with those that are a little bit lower because you always want to tune up. You don't want to try to tune one down. And I'm going to try to turn this one up just a little bit. It sounded like it was just a little bit low. Then I'll check these others. Okay, these uh, sound pretty even now, and we're going to hear how the drum sounds. Just take into consideration that the camera mic is not all that great. And um, so we'll give it a listen. So uh, that's a pretty good uh, sound to start with. Uh, once you get it back to uh, my drum kit, I uh, compare it with the uh, with the other toms.